Okay, so so far we've talked about voltage being the push or the drive of the electrons in a circuit. We've talked about current being the actual flow of electrons. So we're going to, we have one more piece to add to that, which will be resistance. But before we do that, we're going to look at the rules that sort of guide, there are two laws that sort of guide uh, behavior of electrons and other properties within circuits. So making diagrams of circuits, so there are the left hand column here is your textbook. The right hand column is the IB designated. Uh, they look very similar in a lot of ways, but certain things are a little bit different. A resistor, for example, is a squiggly in your textbook, whereas a resistor in IB is a little rectangle. Okay, and these are provided always. You don't have to memorize them. Uh, ones you should know, though, will be lamp, resistor, and battery. On the battery, the long side is positive. The short side is negative. Okay, and then series circuits are one path from start to finish. Parallel circuits are multiple paths from start to finish, and we'll go through a bunch of those today, so you'll see those in practice. So our two laws. So Kirchhoff came up with two laws, or discovered two laws. One law describes the electric potential difference. So one is the voltage law. That's what we're talking about here. So remember, this is voltage. And the other is the electric current in circuits, and it's a current law. Okay, so we're going to go through a couple of different designations. When you see it put into practice, they're really easy. Uh, the words might be a little overwhelming at first. So Kirchhoff's current law, in a closed circuit, the amount of current entering a junction is equal to the amount of current exiting a junction. <clears throat> so if you think of a little dot here with a wire coming in and a wire coming out, if you put two amps into that junction, you would expect two amps to come out of that junction. That's basically what it's saying. And we'll do some more advanced uh, examples in a second. So in a series circuit, because you have only one pathway, the current that you send out along that pathway will be constant through every every part of the circuit. Okay, so if you imagine, here's our circuit. Okay, so if you send out two amps along here, there will be two amps everywhere you look. Okay, that will be the current because there's nowhere else for it to go. Okay, in a parallel circuit though, because there is more than one complete path, if you had a parallel circuit, something like this, uh, say you started with two amps that you sent out from the battery, you may end up with one and a half amps up here and half an amp down here. Okay, so again, it sums for two, but it isn't necessarily going to be two in both locations. Okay, so now Kirchhoff's voltage law. In any complete path in an electric circuit, the total electric potential increase, so remember electric potential, fancy way of saying voltage, at the source is equal to the total electric potential decrease throughout the rest of the circuit. Okay, so again, there are two possibilities here. We have both series and parallel. So when we look at a series circuit, so you can see right here, the voltages drops mean the uh, we're losing energy or we're using energy. Gains will be we're adding energy back into the circuit. So the summation of all of the voltage drops and gains should be equal to what we started with at the battery. Okay, in a parallel circuit, this is the one that's a little bit tricky for people. Uh, the voltages in a parallel circuit will be equal. So if we have, let's say, there's our parallel circuit. Here's our battery. So if we have six volts here, make sure that can fit. Then when we get to this junction, we would find that both pathways here would both maintain six volts. And again, that's that idea of like a pressure, a, a push. Uh, so they both pathways would experience the same amount of push or pressure to move drive electrons along that pathway. And as we do more of these, they'll get a lot easier, don't worry. Okay, so let's look at them. Slightly different uh, wording. This is the IB wording. So Kirchhoff circuit law or circuits law, first law is the junction rule. So this is the current rule, same idea. So when you're looking here, you could see you have nine coming in, five coming in, that's a total of 14 coming into this junction. 
you have 3 coming out, which means you must also have 11 coming out of this other pathway so that the summation of the currents is 0. Okay, that's a fairly logical uh, connection to make. Uh, the voltage one is called the second law or the loop rule. Okay, it means the sum of all our drops and gains. So drops are going down, gains are going up. Okay, must equal zero for a closed loop. And this is a little trickier. Uh, we'll keep it relatively simple, but I'll show you one or two tricky ones uh, down the road, just when we get a little more comfortable. Uh, so here is the summary for series. Here is the summary for parallel. And again, once you see this in action, it makes way more sense. So we're going to jump into that shortly. So let's take a quick look at just a little bit more definition. Uh, so items will either consume energy resulting in a voltage drop, so drop is consume, or they'll contribute energy in the, to the system and we'll call that a gain. Okay, so for IB people, the item that removes energy from a circuit is called a potential difference or a PD. This is just that terminology you need to know. An item that adds energy to the circuit is referred to as an EMF or electromotive force. Uh, just a reminder, it's not really applying force, it's just sort of that, that pressure, that push to move. That's mostly a word issue uh, for us, but it's not a force. So a battery is an example of a gain because it's going to be adding energy to the system, it's adding push to the system, and it would have a positive voltage. Okay, uh, And sometimes they're called EMFs. A lamp, something that consumes energy, would have a voltage drop and be called a potential difference and have a negative value. An ideal battery is referred to as an EMF, and we'll talk a little bit more about batteries in the near future. Okay, and because real life batteries have this internal resistance and that's a whole other lesson we'll get to. Uh, but it is worth pausing here for a second and just taking a look at this table. I'll only highlight one or two just to get the idea. If we look at something like a resistor, so resistors, when you pass current through them, they heat up. So a resistor converts energy from electrical to internal or thermal energy. Okay, And because it's using or consuming energy, we would call that a potential difference. Okay, And it would be a negative or a drop. Okay, If we had something like a microphone, now you may not have noticed this, but a microphone converts sound energy into electrical energy and it would actually be adding voltage or adding to the system so it is a gain so it gets the designation EMF okay and that is mostly just for IB folks that's the terminology that's used in the IB world so it won't be in your textbook so don't panic okay so let's do uh, two very basic little circuits here we have uh, a 6 volt battery that puts out 0.2 amps into this series circuit. Okay, and let me just hide the one down below so it's a little less clear, or a little clearer. So, following the two rules for series, the current must be the same. So when you go through here, and if you look at lamp 1 right here, you'll notice the current is 0.2 amps. As you get to lamp 2, 0.2 amps, 0.2 amps. That means the current that goes along this pathway, okay, doesn't vary because there's only one place for it to go. It has to walk that path. If we look at the voltage though, we started with 6 and now this would be a lamp. We could put a negative on here if we wanted to, uh, if, if you want, felt that designation, but you'll notice 2 volts, 2 volts, 2 volts. If you add all those three up, you would get 6 volts, which is what we started with. So that's those two rules from Kirchhoff for a series circuit. Okay, now it's key to note these are identical loads, so all three lamps were the same. So if we change the load, though, say we had different types of loads. So this one here, it doesn't matter how we come up with the numbers, but this is how they would have to balance. Okay, so we start with 6 volts. You'll notice 1 volt, 1.5, and 3.5. If you total those up, you get 6 volts. Okay, if you look at the current, though, because it's still a series circuit, the current doesn't change, so it's 0.2 amps falling through all of them. Okay, so there's series. That's usually the easier of the two. Parallel is a little trickier. Okay, so when we look at parallel, 
uh, we have a 6 volt source and 0.3 amps being sent out. And this is three identical loads. So our 0.3 amps will come out here, it will hit this junction, and now it splits. Okay, and when we talk about our resistance in our next uh, lecture, okay, that's where we'll start to understand a little bit more on why the current will break up the way it does. But for now, we'll just leave it. So if we have three identical loads, we would see 0.1 amp going down each one of those pathways because they're all essentially the same. So it would distribute itself equally. The part that gets most people, and this is the one thing you have to really pay attention of, notice the six volts that came to that particular junction at the top is distributed amongst all three pathways. It doesn't total for 18 volts. It's just six volts to each pathway. They each have the same potential drop over them. Okay, that's the tricky part. Okay, and let's do one that doesn't have equal loads. Okay, so we have three different loads in this one. So if you notice, uh, 0.3 amps to start. This one here might be an easy pathway, so 0.2 amps is going to flow down there. 0.3 and point, sorry, 0 0.03 and 0 0.07. If you add those three up, you get the 0.3 amps we started with. So the summation of those currents has to stay equal. And the six volts, again, because this pathway from this point here to here has to have a drop of six volts, that means each pathway has that potential on it. Okay, it doesn't total for 18, you don't break it up for twos, make a note of that right now because guaranteed people will do that. Uh, in a parallel circuit, because from this junction to this junction, there has to be a drop of six volts to match the battery because it's the only load right here, or in this problem then each one of the pathways gets a 6 volts. Okay, so let's try one. Working with mixed circuits, so we have series and parallel. Uh, we'll start with voltage and then we'll try current. I start with 40 volts. So that means by the time I get around this circuit, I need to have dropped 40 volts. So that means all of the voltages on all of these four lamps, the total has to be 40 volts. So if I lose 12 here on the first lamp, I don't know how much I lose on the second lamp. Down here in the parallel lamps, because the potential drop from here to here has to be 20 volts, they both experience 20 volt drops because of their pathways. We're not adding them up. This is the property of parallel. This is the tricky one. So from this blue dot to this blue dot, there is a drop of 20 volts. Okay. If I also have a drop of 12 here, that's a total of 32 volts I've dropped, which means the last remaining one needs to be an 8. Okay, I told you parallel would be the trickier one. Don't panic, we'll get used to it. Okay, current. So we have 0.4 amps being sent out from the source because the first one is series. That 0.4 amps has nowhere else to go, so this must be 0.4 amps. This must be 0.4 amps as well in I2 because there's nowhere else for the current to go. Now when you get down to this junction though, the current has some choices. So if 0.25 amps go to the left down I3, then I4 must be 0.15 amps. And you notice those two balance for the 0.4 that we started with at the source. Okay, so let's try one. This is a bit of a larger question. Uh, so I have drawn this picture again. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this for parallel. I prefer to draw my parallel this way. Your choice, however you want to do it, I'm totally fine. So I will do the first one and then I'll leave the second one for you. I think I have the solutions posted here following, but I'll show you how you can attack the problem. So I like to draw a picture large so I can write all over it. So I'm going to do the source is 60 volts. V1 is 20 volts. V3 is this guy right here. It is 15 volts. So we want to find V2, V4, and V5. Okay, so right away when I look at this parallel, if this one here has 15 volts on it, I know that all of these must have 15 volts. Okay, and that's a property of a parallel circuit. 
So the drop from this top blue dot to this bottom blue dot, the drop between those two dots will just be 15 volts, and it is equally available to all three pathways. So if I lose 15 there, I lose 20 at the first lamp, that is tied up uh, 35 volts, that means this at lamp 2 must be 25 volts. Make sense? Okay, I'll do the same problem. I'll switch to red for current. So now for the circuit in figure 7, we have I1 is 0.7 amps, so 0 0.70 amps. I3 0 0.10 amps and I5 0 0.20 amps. Okay, and I like to use multiple colors. I also like to write right on my pictures. This is a method that works for me. You're, you're entitled to do whatever you like, but make it sure it's easy to read and easy to follow. So I know that I have 0.7 amps passing through point one, lamp one here. Well, because that's in series, we also know that that must be the same amount must go through lamp two. Uh, we could also work backwards to the source and say, well, because the first item is in series, uh, 0.7 amps must have been sent out from it. When I get to my parallel component of the circuit, the total of the three pathways needs to be 0.7. So I currently have 0.1 plus 0.2, that's 0.3. So this guy must be 0.4 amps. Cool? So hopefully that shows you it's not as difficult as it perhaps started once you get the idea of how the rules work. So here's a quick summary of the rules. Here's a couple questions to try in 11.6. Just try number two. Uh, the book favors a table format. You are welcome to use that if you like it. Uh, I personally will do all of my examples where I write right up close to the lamps or the resistors. I just find that easier for me. Okay, so this is a voltage problem. It's IB specific. Okay, so if you're not in IB or not looking at potentially going into grade 12 IB physics, then don't worry about it. But this is kind of an interesting one because it puts all three of those previous ideas into effect. Uh, so what makes this one tricky, and the IB definition of the voltage law is the loop rule. So there are three loops here. Okay, so there is a loop here. That's one loop. There's another loop that does this. That's a second loop. And then I'm going to just change colors. There is a third loop, and this is the trickier of the loop, that does that. Okay, so we're going to fill in some numbers, and you're going to see how the drops and gains work. Uh, it's trickier. I'm not going to lie that your, your grade 11 Nelson textbook doesn't cover these types, but well, let's go through them. So let's get rid of that for a second. And we'll do, let's just change this for a minute. Let's do this loop here. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to try and organize this so that I, it's a conventional current. So I'm going to imagine that the, the electrons flow from positive to negative, make it a little easier. So this is 9 volts plus 6 volts plus VI, okay, all has to equal zero. So if you went 9 plus 6 plus V1 has to equal zero, you would get V1 equals negative 15. So this is a voltage drop, and that completes that loop. Okay, so now let's move to our next loop. Okay, so our next loop, again, I'm going to try and coordinate so that things are flowing in the same direction. Makes my life a little bit easier. So at this junction right here, you'll notice those currents are flowing in the same direction. So that makes it a little bit easier to read. Uh, so let's try back to here. So if I start at this 9 volts, Okay, I'm going in the right direction over the battery, so I'm going to have 9 as a plus because it's a gain. I'm going to hit this 3 volts, so that is a drop. So I'm putting it as negative. I hit this 8, that's a battery, and it's because I'm going in the correct direction, that's a gain. And then I have to do something with V2, and all of that has to equal 0. 
So when you solve for this, 9 and 8 is 17, minus 3 is 14, and we end up with negative 14 volts is V2. Okay, and now the last one, and this is the one that's super tricky, um, and I'll try and find more examples for the IB folks. Uh, this one here is this loop. So we're going to go along here and back. And remember, Kirchhoff's law says that in any closed loop, the voltage gains and drops have to be summing, summation, summing, summing to zero. Okay, so let's try this. I'm going to go off to the side because there are a few tricky aspects to this. I'm going to start at the 8 volts. So I have 8 volts. I then have a subtracting of 14 volts because that's a drop. Okay, now this guy right here is tricky. Okay, because it's a negative 15 volts, it would be a drop. But here's the catch. I'm going against the current. So that means the signs flip. Okay, and I, I know that seems strange, but you'll just watch for a moment and you'll see how it works. So because I'm going against this, I would subtract negative 15. When I go across this 6 volts on the top, normally that would be an adding of 6, but because I'm going in the wrong direction, it becomes a subtracting of 6. When I get down here and I get to this 3 volts down here, I'm going in the correct direction, so this is a subtracting of 3. Okay, and now if we total that up in that loop, because we knew all the values, we should get to zero. So let's see, we have 8 minus 14 plus 15 minus 6 minus 3. Okay, so I just took care of the negatives. Uh, so now let's add up the positives. 8 and 15 is 23. Tally up the negatives. Negative 23, and there's the zero we were looking for. Okay, so that's a little bit more intense. Uh, it's bigger than your textbook. Uh, if you're in IB, note those little comments right there. Thanks for tuning in. That was a tough one.